What's going on, Lakers fans? Welcome into the Lakers Report. My name is Patrick Seatman, and coming up on today's show, we're we'll discussing the latest Lakers rumors around DeMar DeRozan as he hinted at his interest heading back home to Los Angeles. And then Donovan Mitchell, more likely than not, he'll be asking out of Cleveland, could the Lakers trade for him? And then Bronny James, could the Lakers take him in the second round of this year's upcoming NBA draft. We'll dive into that here on today's show. But first off, I want you guys to get down in the comments section and name your dream player you would want to join the Lakers this offseason. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. So DeMar DeRozan on a podcast recently, Sham Sharania, hinted at his return possibly back home to the Los Angeles Lakers as he said this, you can never say no about playing at home since he is from Compton, California, or California. And he also said, time will tell. We will see where the cards fall. So honestly, in my opinion, if uh, DeMar DeRozan does not get re-signed by the Chicago Bulls, I think the Lakers are going to be at the top of his list as his dream destination uh, this summer. But taking a look at his numbers over the last four years, DeMar has been solid for Chicago. Um, I think the most underrated part of his game is his playmaking ability. We obviously know he's an absolute assassin from the mid-range, hence why he's almost averaged 24 points a game over the last three seasons. But look at the assist numbers, like 6.9 back in 2020, 4.9 back in 2021, 5.1 and then 5.3. That has been something he has really developed since joining up with the San Antonio Spurs and Greg Popovich, and he's been great with the Chicago Bulls as being that playmaker and initiator of the offense. But I do want to go a little deeper here on DeMar DeRozan's stats, taking a look at some of his advanced numbers. His catch and uh, shoot three-point percentage, actually the highest of his career at 34.5. He took a ton more threes this past season um, with the Chicago Bulls. Obviously, we know great from the mid-range. Loves getting to that pull-up jumper. Shot that at 46.5%. Getting to the rim, 58.3. Pull-up three-point percentage is lower, but he only shot about one per game. He's a very self-aware basketball player, and he only shot that at 29.8%. But we did get this report that Chicago apparently offered DeMar DeRozan a two-year, $80 million deal. Now, if he would come to Los Angeles and join up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, I don't think it would be $40 million to get DeMar DeRozan to return home to Compton, California. I think it's probably going to be around 20 or maybe even 12 and a half to join the Lakers roster. But I definitely think DeMar would fill a need for Los Angeles. You know, we know how special LeBron James and um, Anthony Davis are at attacking the rim offensively, but they don't necessarily have a elite shot maker to shoot over the top of opposing teams' defenses. We obviously know D'Angelo Russell is so hot and cold in the postseason. I think LeBron and the Lakers are just done with that experiment. Austin Reeves is an okay option, but DeMar would be a massive upgrade for the Lakers. And I think this would be a great fit for Los Angeles. And I would definitely bring him in. But you guys let me know. Would you sign DeMar DeRozan this summer if he does become available? Give me an S for sign or give me a P for pass down in the comment section. If I had to say it, I would definitely be bringing in DeMar DeRozan to this Lakers roster. No doubt about that. But you guys let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Would you sign DeMar DeRozan? Give me an S for sign or give me a P for pass. Like I said, I'm all in on DeMar DeRozan heading to Los Angeles. But hey, maybe you guys disagree with me. Now let's uh, talk about Donovan Mitchell here for a second. As it is more likely than not that he will be on his way out of Cleveland. Um, I just don't really see him signing a contract extension with the Cavaliers. And actually, Jason Lloyd, who covers the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, wrote up a very interesting article about the Lakers being interested. He said it's complicated, but so are the Cavs right now. They have their star to worry about in Mitchell, who has one season of team control left beyond this year. If Mitchell does not sign an extension with the Cav, uh, with Cleveland this summer, the Cavs will have to explore trade options. And one of the teams standing at the front of the line will be the Lakers. It's possible, given Mitchell's current condition with his calf, that he has already played his final game in a Cavs jersey. And when I heard that, I immediately thought of, Let's just make LeBron happy. Like, he already delivered a championship in the bubble to the Los Angeles Lakers, and I think he would be thrilled to have Donovan Mitchell, a true three-level scorer, a true, true, just a masterful offensive player that we have here in the NBA. I think LeBron would love it, and I would as well. Now, we're going to get to a trade package around the corner, how the Lakers could possibly pull off a Donovan Mitchell trade. But first, I do want to give a massive shout-out to today's sponsor, and that is Prize 
Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports. And put your basketball knowledge to the test by choosing two to six players and choose more than or less than on their stat projection. The promo code is CLNS. When you're making your first deposit, we will hook you Lakers fans up with a sweet deal of a first deposit match up to $100. The NBA playoffs here, if you guys want to add a little more uh, juice to these basketball games, Prize Picks is the number one way to do so. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use promo code CLNS when you're making your first deposit and we will match it for you diehard Lakers fans up to $100. Get hooked up today. I love uh, Prize Picks. It's one of my favorite apps I have on my phone. So pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Just play Prize Picks. Now, taking a look at what Donovan Mitchell did this past season for the Cavs, he was spectacular yet again. He's been great throughout his NBA career, um, especially with Cleveland and obviously dating back to his days with the Utah Jazz, averaging almost 27 a night. Six assists, five boards, pretty efficient as well for a high-volume player like he is, shooting 46% from the field and 37% from downtown. But how could the Lakers pull this off? So right now as it stands, Lakers do have three tradable first-round picks since now they can throw in their 20-30 first-round pick. And in my opinion, that would be you know a very enticing trade piece for any team is getting that 20-30 Lakers first-round pick because who knows how good the Lakers could be at the time. And maybe Cleveland's looking at that and saying that pick could possibly be in the top 10, top five. So they can make all three of these picks unprotected and throw in D'Lo, Rui, and Jared Vanderbilt. I think this would be one of the best trade packages that Cleveland could offer to a team. But hey, you guys let me know. Lakers fans, would you accept this trade? <laughs> give me an A for accept or give me a D for decline down in the comments section. Or maybe you're a Cavs fan watching today's show. You guys let me know if you guys would do this trade as well. So we're going to close out today's show talking about Bronny James and if the Lakers could take him in the second round at pick 55. Well, with the scouting combine going on in Chicago right now, and they had their scrimmages over the past couple of days, and actually the scrimmage today, Bronny James played pretty damn well. Um, he had 13 points. He was 4 of 10 from the field, 2 of 5 from downtown. He played his ass off, in my opinion, just always making the winning plays, and that's the thing I love about him the most. He has that IQ from LeBron. He will make the winning play over and over again. And also, I do want to point out one player on screen right now. Um, or that was in another game. But there's this guy, um, Nikola Drusic. Uh, he is the Serbian Paul George. That's another name that I uh, think Lakers fans could or should keep their eyes out on as a potential draft pick. But Darich Sam wrote up an article following the games and the scrimmages today, and he said this. He said, James looked more comfortable on the floor on his way to finishing with a team-high 13 points in 23 minutes for Team St. Andrews in a 90-83 win against Team Love. The youngster performed well with his legendary father, Los Angeles Lakers star LeBron James, in attendance along with Lakers general manager Rob Polinka. So good news on Bronny's standpoint that he was able to have a really solid game with two of the most important members of the Lakers organization in attendance. Now, I don't necessarily understand the Bronny hate. I feel like anytime I go on social media, anytime I'm talking with anybody in the chat sports offices, they are all out on Bronny James. And I think one of the biggest reasons why everybody is saying, how could he possibly be a second round pick or how could he even get drafted is because of his college stats. And I just have to say, college stats don't matter. Like they, like they just flat out don't like I think it's more about the eye test and the IQ and just the winning plays he makes is why he is such an enticing prospect to me. His measurables were ridiculous. Had a 41 inch vertical, six foot seven wingspan at six foot one. Now, am I saying he's going to come into the league and be an absolute star? No, but I think he could develop into being one of the better role players we could see in the NBA. Bronny actually talked about it, saying how he's going to compare his game to guys like Derek White and Drew Holiday, and I think that's a great comparison for himself to kind of work towards that goal of being that type of player. And I think this hate just, you know, stems back from LeBron hate. Um, you know, LeBron James has been one of the more you know criticized athletes that we have ever seen that has touched foot in the NBA. And I think it's just going to continue with Bronny James. And I think this is a typical situation where it's like, you know, you see one of your buddies, you know, get a job because of his dad. And you're like, man, the only reason he's doing that and the only reason he got that job was because his you know, dad was within the company and he hooked him up with it. And I totally get that. But I think when it comes to sports and athletics, like it's different. Like I view that as a positive, that this is LeBron James's kid. 
Like, he has that genetics. He has that basketball IQ from LeBron. And, listen, Bronny's been having some of the top, like, training and just overall development since he was at a young age. Like, LeBron was able to offer that to him. So, you know, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I'm a fan of Bronny, and I think he's going to turn himself into being one of the better role players in the NBA if he goes to the right organization and they can develop him the right way. But, hey, this is a controversial question amongst NBA you know, fans and media members. Would you draft Bronny James? Give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no down in the comment section. And also, guys, make sure you guys are subscribed here to the channel. We're going to keep you up to date with the latest around the Lakers this entire offseason. So if you guys haven't already, lock us in as your go-to Lakers YouTube channel. See you guys next time. Go Lakers.